I have been wanting to review this wonderful book for a long time, The God Theory by Dr. Bernard Heisch, and I've been hesitant to do so because I wasn't sure I could even do it justice. And to be perfectly honest, I can't do this book justice. Well, a book review is not really meant to be a broad summary of the book, but just giving you my general impression, so that's all I can do. I am not going to be able to actually explain all of the points in this book as effectively as Dr. Heisch has. So let me just tell you roughly what this is. Um, Dr. Bernard Heisch, first off, let me clarify, is a very qualified astrophysicist. And what he's doing here is he's trying to make the case that the belief in God can be considered a legitimate scientific theory. Now, a theory is an idea that has significant evidence in favor of it, but it's not necessarily proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. There's still reasons to question it. So he doesn't try to convince us that he can prove with all certainty that God exists, just that God is a legitimate theory. Um, at the end of this, I'll, I'll tell you whether I think he's accomplished that, but let me start with this. Um, what he does really is he compares the belief in God to other scientific points of view. Um, he's very critical of reductionism, which is the attempt to explain our consciousness, uh, maybe our ability to reason, and you know everything that really makes us human, those things that cannot be entirely explained by science. Well, reductionists actually do try to explain them by science. I don't think I could um, explain it with all the scientific terminology that he uses, but essentially, uh, many scientists will try to break us down into all of our little parts, all of our little atoms, and say that everything we think, everything we feel, is all the result of just all these little atoms interacting with each other. Um, Dr. Heisch is just very skeptical of that, with good reason, as he explains in this book. And he argues instead, as many philosophers have, that our consciousness, our sense of reason, and our sense of right and wrong, all of these things are evidence that there must be some higher intelligence behind it. Now, let's go further. I think this is his strongest point in the book. It regards the multiverse hypothesis, and it's not a theory, it's a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an idea that's either completely untested or just hasn't been tested that much, not enough to call it a theory. And the multiverse goes something like this. Um, we know about the Big Bang Theory. Look into it if you don't know what it is yet. But the multiverse tries to explain what happened outside the Big Bang. Essentially, that the Big Bang is just one of many Big Bangs, and there are many alternate universes. There's been some interesting scientific fiction on this subject. And Many respected scientists believe in the multiverse, but it's just a hypothesis. There's no way we can test it. And many of them even argue that if there's a multiverse, it really weakens the case for God's existence. Right now, people like Dr. Heisch and probably myself, though I admit I'm not as qualified on this subject, but we would argue that our evidence leads us to believe there must be higher intelligence because... Things just happened a little too perfectly. If the slightest little calculation of, I don't know, the Earth in orbit to the Sun, or you know, the slightest little thing were off, we wouldn't even be able to exist, yet here we are. It's hard to believe that it happened just by accident. But if there is a multiverse, then that means that there could be hundreds, millions, billions, trillions, more than we can count universes, and statistically one of them is bound to turn up, right? The problem is, this is just a hypothesis. Now, a respected scientist can certainly believe in this multiverse, but why can't a respected scientist also believe that God is behind the universe? Furthermore, when I heard him in interviews explaining this, I was worried he was going to fall into a false dichotomy. He was going to say it's either the multiverse or God. Um, fortunately, he didn't do that. He argued instead that God, the highest intelligence, and he uses God almost metaphorically, by the way, but he believes that this great intelligence behind everything um, possibly is also a multiverse, that possibly he's setting many things into motion. And his argument comes down to this, that the reason we exist is for experience, and that would also explain why there's so much good and bad experience in life, because the higher intelligence wants to experience everything, 
and that higher intelligence experiences everything through us. This is a very interesting idea, but here's what I have to conclude in all objectivity. Um, first off, I would love to call God a theory. I really would. And I probably have before, I admit. Um, but a theory requires very significant evidence, not just an interesting hypothesis. And the only evidence we really have for God is, you know, indirect evidence, such as our ability to reason and our sense of right and wrong. I, I don't know if that's strong enough evidence to call God a theory. I don't know that he ultimately succeeded in what he wanted to do here, but he did achieve a marginal victory, and that is that he showed that there's no reason that a respectable science, scientist can't believe in God. There is really at least as much evidence for God as there is for the multiverse. And for someone to argue that the multiverse is more plausible than God, it's really having, um, it, it's, it's definitely a double standard. And of course what I'll often see from run-of-the-mill atheists, probably not, not the most intelligent of the atheists, but they'll often argue that, you know, God's whole existence rests on the Bible story. And if we can prove that the world's not 6,000 years old, uh, we've proven God doesn't exist. Well, if we held all science to um, those kinds of standards, a lot of legitimate theories like evolution would be stricken down. Because certainly, as the theory of evolution was originally presented, we know now it's not exactly how um, Charles Darwin thought it would happen. The same is true of the theory of, well, now the law of gravity. Um, as Newton presented it, he didn't present it perfectly. He made mistakes. And those of us who believe in God, maybe we haven't perfectly presented um, the hypothesis or possible theory of God, but it doesn't mean God doesn't exist just because we've made mistakes. So, Bernard Heisch, I think, at least makes a case that there's at least as much evidence for God as there is for the multiverse, probably quite a bit more. Uh, furthermore, he touches on something very important. The effort to... Um, a try to prove God does not maybe rest necessarily on natural science. Maybe it rests on social science. Maybe it rests on psychology. Maybe it rests on philosophy. And many atheist scientists unfortunately have fallen into this kind of scientism he describes where they think that everything can be explained through natural science, that is the study of nature. But what if nature just exists within something even larger that we cannot explain? So, if you really want to open your mind, I, I recommend reading this book. It, it, it's great. I can't do it justice. I, I just I was blown away by it, and I had to think about it for a long time. So, and, and he puts a lot of these concepts in layman's terms so that ordinary people can understand. And as physics go. I'm just a layman. I mean, I'm a political science professor, so this is way outside my field. But I really enjoyed reading this, and it certainly opened my mind considerably. Not that it wasn't already pretty open as is, but... Um, so I encourage everyone to read this excellent book. And I know he's written another book called The Purpose Guided Universe. I'm sure I'll get that and read it pretty soon as well. Thank you.